Hi, this is Liz and welcome to my podcast, Spiritually Speaking with Liz. Today I'm rejoined for the new year by the fabulous Alana Born Arton, who is joining us today to talk about EFT and matrix re-imprinting. Re-imprinting, actually. Re-imprinting, right. Right. Yeah. Welcome back, Alana. Thank you for thank coming you. back and joining me. And please tell me all. Okay, well, thank you very much, Liz. So the last time I was here, we were talking about soul plan readings, which is the other thing that I do as a spiritual life coach. And soul plan readings are very illuminating and validating for people. They really just help them to... Uh, understand their lives and themselves a bit better and that's the most important thing to get to know ourselves and what i found with the soul plan readings was uh they're extremely uplifting and validating and illuminating and all of those things and uh i have some clients who are very much living their life purpose and their soul plan and that's just fabulous and then we're just validating and giving them a bit more focus and a bit more clarity and then for others they have a sense of their soul plan but they're stuck and they're stuck because life can be hard and uh, they may be stuck in trauma or some old stuff that they just haven't been able to shift. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's entirely plausible that happens because we're human and being human is not easy always. Um, so I knew what I needed was another tool to help people to um, become unstuck and to move forward and to fulfill their soul plan. But I also knew that in order to get them there, I needed to be able to get into their subconscious Mm -hmm. And so I assumed that what I would need to do is train to be a hypnotherapist, because that's, of course, a really effective way of getting people into their subconscious and out of their thinking minds. Yeah, because trauma, when trauma happens in people's lives, it um, obviously can follow them through their life because it's been a negative experience. But it's not necessarily the actual trauma that's following them. It's the belief that's come as a result of that trauma. And all of that sits in their quantum field and their sort of subconscious field. Anyway, I knew I needed to be able to get in there. So I was going to do hypnotherapy. And then um, a friend of mine who's uh, a very skilled, multi-layered therapist at 75, he's an amazing healer, recommended that I do emotional freedom technique and matrix re-imprinting. And I knew a bit about EFT. Mm -hmm. I even semi-trained in it when I trained to be a spiritual life coach. And I knew it was quite effective, but I don't think I really fully understood it. And so it didn't seem like the obvious thing to me. But anyway, because I trusted him, I signed up to this uh, emotional freedom technique course with an extra layer called matrix re-imprinting, which has mm -hmm. been developed by a guy called Carl Dawson, who is one of the masters of emotional freedom technique. And he's developed this extra layer. So emotional freedom technique basically is exactly what it sounds like. It helps your body to release emotion and be free of the emotion that's keeping us stuck. But the matrix re-imprinting takes a step further and helps us to deal with the belief systems that have emerged through our trauma. So emotional freedom technique helps you to release the trauma that's stuck in the body. But matrix re-imprinting deals with the belief that was established as a result of that emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. Does understand. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, total, total sense. Now, I was lucky enough a few weeks ago to experience this firsthand because like you, I've dabbled with EFT and some some semi-training but not not full-on training like you've done and then I've heard of matrix re-imprinting but I'd never really well I'd never really taken it any further or understood what it was fully mm. um, so I had the session with you which I have to say was mind-blowing which is why I wanted you on mm. because the EFT gets through things but the matrix imprinting you took me back um via techniques to a time of, of i was very young i was about four or five and to this belief that then i created at this time and you helped me change that mm -hmm. and it, it was unbelievable really it was mm -hmm. it was so strong it was so powerful and for a couple of days it sort of was not heavy but it, it was there something was I think mate I don't know you tell me is it the fight between me not wanting to let go or well this is how things are and I don't know maybe things 
realigning, resettling? Well, I would dare to say that while you're wonderfully youthful, my friend Liz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't hear <we> that did... <laughs> often. <laughs> <laughs> we did go back quite a long way in your life. Yes. Indeed. And uh, we have patterns that are ingrained uh, that we've carried for a very, very long time. So uh, while the EFT and the matrix re-imprinting is in fact reprogramming, we're taking out untruths mm -hmm. because usually those beliefs are actually really not true. They come from a place of fear. Mm -hmm. So we're taking out untruths and we're replacing them with fact and truth. Mm -hmm. And although the central nervous system and the subconscious is accepting that, there is an habitual pattern within our energy systems that is trying to hold on to the old. And it's mm -hmm. just a little, it's a bit like exercising a muscle. And so that's why once we've done matrix re-imprinting with somebody, we will ask them to replay it that night mm -hmm. and we'll ask them to replay it again in the morning. And some practitioners do it differently. Some practitioners ask, them, ask you to do it for a series of 21 days. Some say you really shouldn't need to do it more than twice. But it is, uh, it's just about training the muscle because we are all energy and we have uh, energetic muscles as, as well as physical muscles. And so it's just mm -hmm. those patterns. They're very ingrained. They just need, and usually I will see a client for, you know, three or four sessions. So we'll go, and it won't just be the same thing we're dealing. We might be dealing with the same theme, like somebody might come to me with anxiety mm -hmm. or they might come with an ailment or they might come with a, a sort of persistent emotion. And we may go into one memory that's influencing that particular issue, mm -hmm. but there will be multiple memories that will be feeding that issue. Mm -hmm. So the earlier we can get back to the, perhaps some of the root memories that are causing those issues, the more effective the work will be. But the earlier we go back, the longer the person has been living with it. And yeah. so it's quite good to just go in and out of various different memories and to clear out the untruth, to put in the truth and do it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for you, when time permits, we'll go back and we'll do some more. We'll get to different ages because what happens when you go into the matrix re-imprinting just for the benefit of your listeners who haven't had the experience, we are basically going into regression or again, going into earlier versions of you that mm -hmm. we call the echo there is a specific reason why we call it echo it's not just because it is an echo of you there's a, a scientific term but the earlier versions of you are, are what we call echoes and in a session with somebody very often when we have um when we have adjusted that echo and we've taken out the untruth and we've put in the truth and the fact and we've we've um re-imprinted that before we leave we will ask that echo of you if there is another echo they'd like to take us to and sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't but if there is, it's always another age, another stage and another element of that scenario. And we'll do the same thing again with that echo. I mean, in some sessions, I've done three or four echoes in one session. And it's been just a beautiful journey because when you're in the re-imprinting process, you're actually in the quantum field. So, so, thought, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but explain what the quantum field is mm. for anybody that isn't sure. Yeah, it's really important to understand that. So yeah. our subconscious is our quantum field. So we are all energy. We are much more than just our bodies. We don't stop here at our bodies. We have these energy fields. And the energy fields take us into what science now recognizes as the quantum field. So mm -hmm. most of what's going on is not going on in our heads and our memories. It's going on in our energetic fields. And so when we take people into EFT and matrix re-imprinting, we are going into that quantum field, that personal quantum field of that person. And so when we go in there, there is nothing short of cosmic alchemy that happens. It's an amazing experience. It takes on a bit of a life force of its own. And it does that because actually it's real. It's mm -hmm. real. So the younger versions of ourselves, they actually still exist. It's quite a lofty concept to get your head around, but they actually still exist. So there are, are multiple children and ver younger versions of ourselves within ourselves, which is why regression therapy happens so well happens so effectively so when you go back to the younger version of yourself they have simply been waiting to be heard they have simply been waiting to be heard and once they're heard and they're at ease and they're healed they'll take you to another version of themselves that needs the same thing mm -hmm. so it takes on a bit of a life force of its own it's a very unusual experience but it's a very very simple yet profound thing to do you do need the training to be able to do it. And you need to be supported to do it. Mm -hmm. But at any time, my clients can open their eyes and just say either it's too much 
or I'm not getting it, or I'm not ready. I and mean, it rarely happens because it's quite a beautiful experience. You know, they just, it sort of flows quite nicely. But what always amazes me is in the middle of a session with a client, they might suddenly go, oh my God, I get it. Mm. I get it. You know, there's a sudden sort of dawning and a realization of what the hell has been, they've been dragging through their lives for so long. Um, and that doesn't happen because of their imagination. It happens because the quantum field is a real thing. It's so amazing, isn't it? We're, we're such complex creatures anyway, but to to have that going on in the background as well and, and to have access to that where you can just, pardon the pun, but tap into it and... Quite, quite literally. Yeah, yeah and, and be guided how to, how to loosen things, how to loosen thoughts or limiting beliefs that have had a grip on us for so long. Mm-hmm. It, it's just incredible isn't it yeah well we're we're at a, a stage of evolution now for mankind where we are being allowed to know more you know it is becoming readily available to us all this information about what it really means to be human mm-hmm. and you know that veil between the spiritual realm and the physical realm is just thinning and narrowing all the time so yeah. our inherent abilities that we've always had down through the millennia have been slightly dumbed down through modernization, et cetera. Um, mm. It's another whole debate, but it's coming back now. Ancient wisdom is coming back now. And all of these tools are are being, you know, made available to us. But soul plan is a relatively young thing. It's about 30 years old, but you know, numerology and so many other facilities that help us to understand who we are as humans and how we operate is available to us. And when I trained in the EFT and matrix re-imprinting, I was staying in a hotel for a week as we were doing it, doing the course. And uh, every night I had lots of time on my own just to reflect and absorb and integrate everything I was learning. And there was certainly a moment where I was really utterly blown away by all of this. Yeah, and I yeah. said to the trainer the next morning, you know, I'm, I'm sure you are aware, but you know, I'm just going to ask you, are you aware of what you've created here? Because it's incredibly profound. And he very wisely and automatically said, I have not created this. The quantum field is an entity in itself. I've just given us access into it. Wow. Wow. It, it, I think when we do these courses and you're fully immersed in it, mm. it it gives it a whole other meaning, doesn't it? When you, you know, when you're 24 seven, particularly, you know, when you're staying away as well. I think I, I've always liked that to stay away on a course because you mm. can absorb it, mm-hmm. be with it. Mm. No you know, distractions. Yeah. No, exactly. Go to bed when you want. Get up when you want. Wake mm. up in the middle of the night scribbling, and you know, there's there's so much that that can be learned from that. Completely immerse yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and mm. but I think you're right. There are there are so many tools becoming more and more available now people coming up with things I mean there are things that have been about for millennia Mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of these things that can be based on that but some of them you know like this I think is quite profound very profound and this matrix re-imprinting is is more profound than just EFT but Mm -hmm. EFT in itself is an incredibly useful tool. I've just finished a session with a young woman who I've been helping who was really uh, afflicted with uh, anxiety and has been for a long time, but she's young. And, you know, anxiety is a, you know, it's a tremendous challenge for a lot of people, more and more and more living in today's society. But we just did a bit of tapping. She's had loads and loads and loads of therapy. But we've just been doing some tapping and I literally had two sessions with her. I did a soul plan reading with her and then I did some EFT and matrix re-imprinting with her. So one session of EFT and matrix re-imprinting before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then she went off and had her Christmas. And I've just had another session with her now and she looks transformed, I have to say. And speaking with such light and joy. And I said to her, what is going on? And she said, I've just been (laughs) tapping. (laughs) Oh, I love that. It must be so rewarding when you see somebody like that and you can make such a difference to people's lives. And and like you say, it's the, the perfect addition to the soul plan reading mm-hmm. of if somebody is in a place where they're thinking, well, actually, I'm not happy here. I don't want to be here, but I don't know how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Then it's the perfect way, isn't it? Just to to help to guide them. 
And, you know, emotions are, are, you know, basically this physical realm that we live in is the realm of emotion. Mm -hmm. And so we do get to experience every single emotion on the spectrum of human emotions. And some are incredible and some are very painful. And they are by design. And really, my main sort of focus is to take the fear out of emotion. Emotions mm -hmm. are going to happen. They're going to happen. Yeah all of them will happen at various times in our lives. And so I would just love to help my clients not to fear them. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing is that when an emotion comes up, oh God, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. We want to run away from it. We want to block it, we want to eat it away, drink it away, smoke it away, whatever we do, eat mm -hmm. it away. But what I, what I love about EFT is that we can just go and sit with it. Just sit with it, just take ourselves off to a quiet space and just close our eyes and tap. And all we have to do is think this emotion, this emotion, this emotion. And by doing that, we are welcoming it. And there may be some tears, there may be some shouting, but it's coming out. That yes. is what's so important. But the tapping helps us to get to the root of where it's coming from, because very often we don't know. No, we don't. And, and I don't know about you because we're similar age mm. that we weren't taught to express our feelings, were we? We were taught to to push them down. And not, you know, there's there's a jack in a box down there full. <laughs> there's a jack in the box. There <laughs> certainly is. And if we can just let that jack come out and be heard more often, yeah. it doesn't need to come out quite as often. No. You know, it just there are some very big emotional energies that come out, and we don't want to be dictated and ruled by them, but nor do we want to run away from them. So we just sit with them, we tap through them when we clear them. And it's that whole, this too shall pass. And even if we don't go into it and tap with it, if we just sit with it mm -hmm. and know this too shall pass. I mean, I'm teaching this stuff every day of the week and coming out the other side of Christmas, I was a bit flat, just a bit toxic, lots of champagne, <laughs> lots of prosecco, really? lots of food. <laughs> so lots of overindulging, yeah. having a wonderful time. But I knew even while I was letting my hair down, doing it all, that this side of Christmas was going to be the January blues, just because, you know, for all those reasons. And it was heavy and it was full moon. And I really feel the full moon energy. And it, I was just in a bit of a funk. I just couldn't lift my energy. I should probably have just given myself last week off. But anyway, mm -hmm. came through the week and I just kept thinking, this too shall pass. It will pass. It just will pass. So I sort of tapped through it and it just, and then suddenly today, do you know what? It's all fine. It's all fine. Can you then, well, first of all, tell me who could this help? What could the EFT and matrix reimprinting help? What sort of situations? I know you've said like old limiting beliefs, but mm -hmm. for somebody who's listening that might be struggling, say, with anxiety or depression or what, what else? What other? Symptoms? Well, the first thing I would say to that is that every single symptom that we are dealing with in our lives, and I'm an absolute believer in this now, it's proven scientifically and I've, we've known it for a long time. I truly believe that every single issue we're dealing with, whether it's a physical ailment, it's an emotion, or it's, uh, you know, a mental health challenge, whatever it is, it all has an, an emotional root, mm -hmm. an emotional root. So I don't believe there's really a single thing that EFT can't help with. Now, all of these things are complementary therapies. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying give up going to your doctor or don't have that operation or don't have that treatment. These are complementary therapies that can really accelerate the process of healing. Yeah. But I mean, certainly mental health issues, without a doubt, would be the number one. Uh, I would have I would suggest that EFT and matrix reimprinting would be one of the number one things to do for uh, any kind of mental health issues, particularly anxiety or depression. Okay. But, you know, I do have people with chronic fatigue. I have people with, um, you know, ailments all over their bodies. And I would definitely do that. So what we do, so I will just demonstrate to you what we do, basically. So, right. somebody, com yeah. so somebody, somebody comes in to me with anxiety. Mm -hmm. What I will do is just have a little chat with them. As we're chatting, we'll be tapping the various points of the body. So I'm just going to demonstrate what we do. Okay, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> the points that we tap on the body our meridian points so they're where our energy put there are energy points of the body these meridian points are connected with our central nervous system mm -hmm. when we have anxiety or depression or any any dis-ease or discomfort in our body 
it's because our central nervous system is in fight flight it's in stress state it's not in the rest and repair state and you know in our ancestors day the hunter gatherers day the fight flight was because there was very real danger around the corner today there are stresses all the time but it isn't a saber-toothed tiger that we have to run away from so we're in a constant sort of state state of stress all the time but we can't Mm -hmm. run that out of our system because there's no real reason to run okay so we've got all these negative stress hormones flying around our bodies but not for the same reasons that we used to have. And we haven't evolved well enough to cope with these levels of stress. So what we want to do is we want to bring the body out of that fight flight and into rest and repair. And that's what this tapping does. So literally, as I'm speaking to a client, I'll be tapping on what we call the karate chop here. Mm -hmm. And they'll be mirroring me. So we're literally just tapping very gently on here. It doesn't even have to be hard. So that's the first point. The second point is the crown of the head. And that's not the fontanelle area. It's literally the very tip of your head here, the crown of your head. Then the next place is here where your nose meets your eye, tapping on the, on the socket there. Then on the side of your eye, literally your temple area, just below the eye at the bottom of the eye socket. Top lip, just above the top lip there, just below the bottom lip there. And then here, If you roll your elbows forward, you'll feel two recesses here. And as you sit up, you'll have your finger on them. And it doesn't matter whether you're right or left, and you can alternate right or left for the whole session. But you would literally just tap there. And you'll know you've got the right spot because it tends to be a little bit sensitive. And then under the arm, where your bra strap would be, you just tap there. And then the final part of the round is the thumb. You literally dance along the side and the top of the thumb, tops of the fingers. And that's it. That's one whole round. But Mm -hmm. as we're chatting, they'll be following me and tapping and we'll be talking while we tap. And literally as we talk, I can physically see people just starting to relax into the chair and just. And people who've carried stress for a very long time, they find it quite tiring. They get very tired because when you're like that all the time, you're braced and you're on high alert. When you start to relax, your body goes, oh, my God, I'm exhausted. (laughs) (laughs) My son slept for three hours after his breast. Really? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so the tapping just calms the central nervous system. And as the central nervous system calms, then clarity comes. Because when we're in that fight, fright, in that sort of ready to run mode, we're not in that relaxed state and we can't think clearly. We can't think clearly. We're tapping into the central nervous system, which relaxes down into the heart space. And it's from the heart space that the wisdom comes up. And it is absolutely remarkable that when I'm chatting to people, we're chatting away, doing a usual sort of counseling session. And then suddenly they'll go, oh my God, I've just remembered something. Bingo, we're onto it, we're onto it. Or they might say, I'm a, I've got acute anxiety. I just paralyzed with anxiety. So I just say, okay, just close your eyes, take a deep breath, put your hand on your heart. And they'll close their eyes hand on the heart, and I will ask them to visualize an extremely, you know, triggering situation. And we have to go back there just to really root it. So we go back into a triggering situation. Yeah, I feel the anxiety. Where are you feeling it in your body? We'll gauge it in the body from one to 10, one being barely at all, 10 feeling it very intensely. Usually it'll be in the solar plexus area, the gut or the heart, might be in the throat. Wherever it is, we identify where it is in the body. And then we tap. So we'll literally be tapping, you know, this feeling of anxiety in my abdomen, in my heart, wherever it is, this feeling of anxiety. And we'll just tap away at that. So we'll be feeling that, feeling that. And just as we tap about the anxiety, we don't need to be saying anything in particular. The body will start to calm down a little bit. And as it starts to calm down a little bit, some thoughts and memories may well emerge. If they don't naturally come up, then I will just say, give me some scenarios of a very stressful situation. Can you think of a time? And then we'll be talking about the patterns in their lives, where this anxiety triggers, what triggers it. And we'll be going back to various times in their life where they've had big anxiety attacks. So what we'll then do is we'll choose a particular memory of a particular anxiety attack, and then we'll go into the matrix re-imprinting. So we'll revisit that memory. Mm -hmm. And as I did with you, I just asked my client to step into the picture and just observe their younger self, their earlier self in that memory. And that earlier self is what we call the echo. And I asked my client in that picture, in their memory, just to walk over to the echo and start tapping on the meridian points on the echo. And it doesn't matter if they do it specifically or in the right order, as long as they're tapping on those meridian points. And then we will start to address the untruth 
of the belief that emerges in that time. So when somebody's anxious, usually the thought is, I'm not safe. It's usually I'm not safe. Yeah. I'm vulnerable. I'm not safe. I'm not safe here. So we'll tap on their echo until the echo starts to feel safe. And if they're not feeling safe in that environment, we resource them and we say, right, ask your echo where they'd like to go. Is there somewhere they like to visit when they're feeling, you know, really at ease? Might be a beautiful place in nature, might be their bedroom, whatever. So we'll go to that place. And then we just start to talk to the echo. We start to talk to the echo about, you know, you're feeling anxious because of this reason, but you're actually very safe. Look at me, I'm fine, you are safe. And so it's just a sort of rewiring of taking out the old untruths and putting in the new truths. But we create it in a very, we create the scene and the environment in a very creative and um, uh, sort of magical way because in the quantum field, there is cosmic alchemy. We can do what we like. Mm -hmm. We can bring in rainbows. I mean, one of the women I was working with once, uh, money is an issue for her. And um, she doesn't really know where it came from, but she grew up in a, in a house of lack and her mother was always fretting about money. And uh, so we did the whole process and we got to the end. And I said to her, so, you know, we're, we're bringing this truth feeling to the fore. We're making it bigger and brighter. We're really feeling the truth of the situation here. So what do we have? Do we have some sunshine? Do we have some spring smells? She said, oh, it's raining gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> How fabulous. Because <laughs> that's what the quantum field does. It gets really, really into what's happening. And it, it just happens. It just happens. And it's it's quite hard to describe, really, until somebody's actually experiencing it. Um, it, it is. It, it is. I remember with my own as a young child and there I was floating off in my little pink boat with my dog by my side, <laughs> all happy. And and now when I think, you know, if ever if anything makes me think of that limiting belief, that old belief, then I just imagine that little Lizzie in a little boat with a dog and off she is, you know, with the sails off across the clouds. And it's such a nice, it brings such a warm feeling and, and such a, it's such a relief really that, you know, that, that weight of carrying something for so long. And then for, for you to know, one for you to be able to see it, but one for you to know that actually, no, that isn't how it has to be. That isn't, what I'm meant to believe, what I'm meant to think, act, whatever it might be. It, it's very empowering. And, you know, let's not forget that, you know, we all do the best with what we have. and mm. We all do the best with, with what we know. And we are all the sum total of our own life experience. And so we're going to pass that on to whoever we're caring for or nurturing or whatever. Yeah, of course. And so our parents, you know, they were doing the best they could with what they had. And everybody's parents do. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's not forget that we all have the parents that we have by design for our soul's journey. And that really does actually help. But in any event, there's going to be levels of dysfunctionality because no human is perfect. No, no human is perfect. But I had one client once who she really, really wanted tiny tears for Christmas. She just wanted tiny tears. Now, you and I are old enough to know who tiny tears is. Yeah. For, the, for the younger audience, tiny tears was a doll that wet itself and cried and did all those things. Okay, But no other doll would do in the 1970s. It had to be Tiny Tears. Mm -hmm. And she was really hoping to get Tiny Tears. And uh, for Christmas, she got uh, a very inadequate doll. Mm -hmm. Now, it was only one of a series of experiences like that. Mm -hmm. But what she decided that meant was that she wasn't valued enough to get what it was that she really, really wanted. Nobody mm -hmm. cared enough for her heart's desire. She was always second best. Everything was less than what she wanted and felt she deserved. So she didn't feel that she deserved anything. And that just followed her through her life. She was always trying to do the people pleasing because mm -hmm. she never felt valued enough. And it was just, uh, she was on the course with us actually. And it was just such an eye opener for her. So that became clear just just doing the tapping that became clear that's what her belief system was so when we went into the matrix re-imprinting she could see this little girl and she could see what the little girl was believing and feeling but she was able to go up to her and say no no that's not why this was happening that's not why this was, it was only happening because they just didn't have enough money for tiny tears but here is tiny tears because <laughs> we can do that in the quantum yeah. field yeah. now you have it now you have it but she understood, oh, I understand, yeah, I understand that. It wasn't because I was not deserving. It was because they just didn't have the money or whatever. There's always going to be a reason. 
it, th this is what always fascinates me that the psychologists say up to the age of six, seven, eight mm -hmm. is where we make all our beliefs. What we, even as adults now, we are operating from that age, from decisions we made of that age of what a mum should be like, what a dad should be like. Mm, the alpha what, brain. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's quite, well, it's just incredible that, I mean, we don't come with manuals, do we? We don't, we don't come with, and, and parents don't come with manuals for a baby, and which would never all be the same either. Mm. And it's very, we're such complex creatures, mm. which is an amazing thing, but it's also our downfall, isn't it? By what we then start to believe, what we think we should or shouldn't be doing, and all from that young age. I, I just yeah I, yes I, yes and you know on the one hand that realization could be a bit daunting and it might leave us slightly despairing about being human but actually when you're when you do a soul plan reading you come to understand that all of those early life challenges are by design they're for our growth mm -hmm. and it seems a brutal system but we're not just given those challenges when we every time we reincarnate in this human experience we are also given very specific gifts and talents that really are closely related to our challenges and help us to overcome them as we work towards our growth and our soul's goal. And so um, as long as we're doing the work on ourselves and we're lucky enough to come across people that help us along the way, we start to see with a sort of conscious reflection with the benefit of hindsight, I can see what that was all about. I know what I was learning there. Mm -hmm. But you're absolutely right. I mean, from from naught to six or seven, we are learning in that alpha brain, sort of absorbing what people are telling us, what we're observing, what we're feeling. We're like sponges at that stage. Mm -hmm. We don't get into that really cognitive thinking brain till about six or seven when we start thinking a little bit more independently. And so, for better or worse, our primary carers are having a tremendous influence on us, mm -hmm. a tremendous influence. So another client of mine is, you know, is struggling with anxiety. And I said to her, um, what sort of a mother was your mum? You know, was she an anxious person? Oh, yeah, terrible anxiety. And she said, so was my grandmother. And so was her mother. And I was like, okay, this all makes wonderful sense. So you were always actually going to be anxious because you were being brought up by very anxious people. Yeah. So you were being brought up to believe the world's a scary place. Mm. and you're in danger because of course an anxious mother's going to be fretting all the time yeah. you know, quick, don't do that you know that nobody's fault she was brought up by an anxious mother you know and we're passing it along but it was exactly what she was meant to be experiencing in this lifetime and she's growing dramatically and she can see with conscious reflection what she's learned from all of that that's the key being able to see being conscious or having the help to be conscious to see what you're learning what your lessons are mm. because I think that like for me with the soul plan that helps you to let go of a lot of things that have maybe been just mithering about a little bit and you just you get that clarity and just think oh okay it seems to be able to to let that go doesn't it to just give you that that focal point and that permission as well you know mm. until we have a bit of clarity like a soul plan or something like that or a clairvoyant reading or whatever it is until we're given that clarity and that absolute validation of this is who you are and you know invariably people will completely connect with their soul plan they'll either be fully embodied in it or they'll have a very strong feeling of it mm -hmm. and if that and that will the latter will be if they're still stuck in their challenges and sometimes they are sometimes they just need some help but again it's by design that they're getting the help some yeah. people get to the end of their lives without any help at all there's always a conscious awakening mm -hmm. and we just want to make sure that comes as early as possible in life not a week before our death or on our deathbed we want to be growing all the time doing the work on ourselves all the time that is really the the main responsibility of humankind is to learn ourselves really to learn about ourselves so, um, yeah, I don't know what more, what more I can add to that, really. It's just no, uh, well, a journey. It is. It's amazing. And thanks to people like yourself, people can do that. Pe people can have the help mm -hmm. to unravel what needs unraveling, to be pointed in the right direction, to say, do you know what? But that's OK. Mm -hmm. Or to go back to these times, to these limiting beliefs and rewire.
And also, I don't, um, I don't profess to have the magic wand and the ultimate solution for everybody. I am a step in the path. Mm -hmm. And so like I will refer people to you. I'll say go and see Liz, get some beautiful stuff from the shop and vice versa. I work with Lulu here at Tanfield Wellness who does craniosacral therapy. She's a profound healer. So she does the energy work. I do the sort of talk work with a bit of the intuitive coming in. So together, that's a really nice combination. So mm -hmm. if I'm getting a little bit stuck with a client and I can see, you know, they could just do with a layer of the stuff being taken off energetically, they'll go and see Lulu. So it's multiple layers, multiple facilities. I don't think there's any one thing, but people should always be open to exploring. Yes. So, but I think emotions, if you're, if you're struggling with emotions and mental health, EFT, matrix re-imprinting, amazing. Yeah. Uh, if, you're if you're struggling with physical ailments that just won't go away, the doctors can't figure out what it is, the chances are there's an emotional route to it. It would be mm -hmm. great to do that. But in, in that situation, I would definitely do some work to determine where we're at figure out what the route is i would probably then bring in some energy work from you know somebody like lulu we, are, we are complex beings but we're we are very complex, complex beings but like i say with people like yourself along the way that are helping pointing people in the right direction mm -hmm. just helping people to come back to the balance isn't it that's what it all comes back to that understanding balance, balance. balance. liz you're yeah. absolutely right i mean our universe is continually trying to balance itself it's always working towards balance and we are part of that cosmic universe and we need to be balancing ourselves all the time we when do. we get ill when we get disease when we get emotion we're out of balance that's all that's happening so true well thank you so much for joining me again you've been you're a very pleasure very as always uh, thank you oh such thank joy, you darling and I shall be back in that room with you soon. Ah, I look forward to it. Keep up the good work, Liz. Keep I chatting with lots of lovely people. I lots will. Of love. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.